Hey everybody, welcome back to One Minute Walking Tours on this cool day here at Gettysburg. Today I want to talk to you about this monument right here. It says Major General Winfield Scott Hancock, wounded July 3rd, 1863. Now where we are is sort of the, you know, where are we? Left, oh, well, not the extreme left, but the left of the Union line, center of which is that column on this uh, seminary ridge or cemetery ridge. And in the other direction, you can see the large and impressive uh, Pennsylvania Monument, if I can show it to you. It's there somewhere. Uh, and of course, they should have the largest monument. This is, after all, Pennsylvania. And if you saw my video on the first Minnesota, uh, their monument is right there, right right out there. So everything's a little bit close here on, this, on the Union line. And what's interesting about Winfield Scott's wounding is maybe this isn't the spot. He's here somewhere. Now, Hancock is on his horse, and he's looking up at how the third day attack, Pickett's Charge, is developing right up over here. And one of the commanders in the, in the uh, Confederate Army is a friend of his, and he's sort of wondering what's happening to him. He is eventually killed, getting not too much farther from there. So as I said, Hancock is sitting on his horse somewhere in this area, and a bullet hits the horn of his saddle and drives into his groin. Now that's not a euphemism for bits and pieces. That's into the tendons and the area just above um, his right femur, into that area. Falls off his horse and he, people come over to aid him. Obviously he's a major general. He's in command of the, the, the second corps. And uh, he is now in charge of what's called the left wing. So that's everything, not including Culp's Hill, all this down here. And Hancock will come out of this battle, you know, severely wounded and essentially out of the fight into the wilderness, which is actually really the next fight for the Union Army. But um, he falls off his horse and says, good God, don't let me bleed to death, because that's really the concern. So the bullet lodges inside him and he never really recovers. He will go through a number of operations, including uh, a, a, an operation that puts him in the position he was in on his horse. Uh, so they can find the track of the bullet, they remove it, and he does a lot better. Uh, for years, bone fragments will come out <laughs> of the wound uh, and pieces of, of whatever went in there when it hit the, the horn of the saddle. So Hancock clearly develops diabetes and some other health problems later in life, and this does shorten his life, although he does run as the Democratic nominee for president in 1880, and that doesn't really seem to slow him down. Uh, despite Hancock's, or, well... Hancock was born to the military. He served in the uh, Mexican War. He serves with extreme dedication and distinction here at Gettysburg. Um, and part of that, I think the motivation is he's a native Pennsylvanian, and he certainly wants to make sure that there are no more Chancellorsvilles, there are no more um, Fredericksburg. And Meade sees that in him and gives him the command above other people who were senior, uh, generals who were senior in front of him. And right here, he nearly loses his life wondering how his friend is doing and wondering if his men will be able to repulse this enormous attack on the third day. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you here soon on One Minute Walking Tour.